Okay, so today we're going to play show and tell. We're going to uh, we're going to go through our list. I've got a, some other news. I see Alan, what you mean. Mean. Alan, what do you have? So we need to talk about so they can enjoy. Wait, what? You what? We can talk about RRR. We could talk about RRR. I want to do I want to do a little show and tell because I want I got I got some okay. fun stuff. So all right. I think I think we should just start. Yeah, start. Okay. You ready, Glenn? I'm ready. Yeah. Alan, you ready? <laughs> uh yeah, hey. Welcome everyone. I am Chris Gore. This is Film Threat, the Film Threat Live Cast, live on a Wednesday for our Hollywood on the Rocks show. So grab yourself a drink. We're getting things started. It's our first show of 2023, and I'm happy to talk to you here. Lots to discuss today. So much to tell you. Uh, so there you go. Uh, it was Yes, it was my plan all along to just go live early. I'm going to go live early now. So be prepared for that. If you're early and you see the show at the top, you get to see all the, the what we're talking about right before we start the show. We may just clip that out. So if you're not here right at the beginning, you're going to miss it. Uh, can't wait to talk to you all. Let's get things started. Let's get things started and kicked off for 2023. So Alan, we'll start, are we going to start yet? Uh, yeah, we're going to start. We're going to start. We are ready. Alan, Ng, how is your 2023 so far? Oh, uh, hey. You know, I wish all years could start like this. Okay. I'm just at home, goofing off. All right. All right. Good. Good to hear. I am, I have, by request of everyone, I have a new camera. I have a new camera. I'm very excited. I got a gift uh, from someone. Uh, that I care about deeply. Uh, and I was very excited to get this. It is, let's see, I'm going into my settings. It is the Razer Keo Pro. And I am figuring out how to use it. I know. It's, so I might it's not looking be, good so far. You know what? I'm, I might be a little blown out. I might need to you are blown out. Am yeah, I a little blown that, out? Is it the light back here? Yeah. What, well, whatever light is like on your, uh, Going to your upper right face. Yeah, that's better. It's better. It's Although better. your room is dark now. <laughs> My room is a little dark. All right, well, let's fix that. Let's fix it right now. Uh, Alan, let's do, uh, first of all, I'm just going to say hi to everybody. Happy 2023. L let's, let's get right into it. Yes, I do have a new camera. Let me turn up the brightness a little bit. All right, cool. That's, that's a little better. That's a little better. Still looks a little dark. Uh, yeah. But I'll I'll, I'll work Are on you my in life. focus. That's the big thing. What's that? Are you in focus? Yeah. Am I in focus? Yeah. At least you're not shifting in and out of focus. Like before. okay. Well, let's let's leave it at that. All right. Look, who who? You, you, look, you don't need to watch the show. <laughs> Just listen. Just listen to what we're saying, and I'm happy you're here. Let's go right into who is in the chat. Who we're talking to today. Who is here with us early? Let's see. We have Hank VP says the thumbnail is a lie. You know, Chris and Alan share the same bed like Bert and Ernie. Oh, well, that's yeah. probably true. Alan was very excited. He was on top. Yes. Uh, 69ing. <laughs> oh, that's a play on. That's, I don't know. That's a reference, Alan. I think that's a reference to you. Maybe. Maybe. Is it? 69. Uh, well, there you go. You're not wearing the, the same shirt, but there you go. I almost have to retire that one. Hey, now. anyone have the details on the weekly meetup in LA? There is, it's an unofficial, this is not an official film threat meetup. I have a movie meetup group I go with every week. It is at the AMC Burbank 16 in Burbank, California. Uh, we usually meet at uh, somewhere for happy hour. It's uh, Yard House or Islands, or you can just meet us 
right outside by the Batman statue in front of the AMC 16. We go to see whatever movie is the new movie opening that week, whatever's opening. This week we are seeing Megan, the 8 p.m. show in the Dolby Digital Theater. So if you're interested, pick up tickets, meet us by Batman, or look for us in the happy hour. It's unofficial. Um, I think Pauly and Mexican Iron Man are going to be there this week. Yes, I believe so, Mexican Iron Man is making a point to, to be out there. He is going to be there. So I'll be hanging with, with uh, Mexican Iron Man and and Pauly from Latino Slant. Jo join us. It's just very informal. It's, it's, not, it's not like a formal thing. It's just like we pick a movie to go to. Do you want to be in the same theater as us? Buy tickets to the movie. So I have seen Megan, actually. I saw it at a screening yesterday. And I'll tell you about it, but that is that is the the details are just go to the Burbank 16 on Thursdays, and there you go. More comments here. Alan Horkin says, "Is the thumbnail from Step Brothers?" Probably. <laughs> Glenuccio says yes. Glenuccio, our intrepid producer. Shuxi, I'm absolutely shocked. Chris is the bottom, and Alan is the top. You got to mix it up. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not much shocked by that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just love, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Solomon Thornton. Thanks, Chris, for the script info. Happy New Year. Yes. Um, those are useful. There, there are more than just those, but kick it off with that Solomon and, and you'll be good and reach out to script doctor. He will help you. Tony Bauer says, Hey, that was Glenuccio. Neat. Patrick Lemire. Glenuccio unmasked. Yes. That was a Glenuccio face reveal. That was a, if you're early, you got to see the Glenuccio face reveal. Red Terror 1978 says, Boomer stream begins in three, two, one. Yes. Welcome, everyone, says Lord Thoth. John Manilang, what up, FT 2023? Heck yeah. Spidey Sensei says, new camera, who this? So, and Jocelyn says, surely 2023 will be better, right? Right? I don't know. I think when it comes to the world, I think we're headed to some dark times. <laughs> Why? But, Nothing's going on right now in Congress. <laughs> uh, well, that may be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the less they do, the better. Absolutely. If the last two years has caught me, taught me anything, it's that our elected officials are utterly worthless. iDog says, Babylon is so underrated. I would agree with you. Wi hey, super chat here from Willie the Monkey King's Music channel of doom for buck 99 says, Hey, Chris, pimp daddy gore, and Alan big D and G, uh, smile yeah. face. Yeah, for an Asian, that would be a, a true uh moniker. There, there you go, Nosferatu the vampire. Any thoughts on Robert Eggers' upcoming Nosferatu film? I think it'll be spectacular, especially yeah. considering the Northman. Although the Northman didn't resonate on a mainstream level, um, I think it is a uh. An incredible creative achievement. It's on my list. Some of the best films of the year. It's a short list. I couldn't come up with a top 10. I could next, not. This year, top 10 for no, movies. Excuse me, excuse me, for 2022, I could not come up with a list. Yeah. I so, could barely do five. Yeah, five was even tough. And then I just had honorable mention. I had like a bunch mm -hmm. of movies that were solid movies. But I don't know if they were top 10 worthy. Yeah. I'm going to reveal my list. I have in a Google Doc. That I'll be sharing screen with very shortly. Um, let's play a little before we get things started. Uh, where, where we're getting into the topic of the day. I'm gonna unstar all these. Wait, a couple more came in here. MK Solid 82 says, Chris Allen was spotted digging through the dumpster at Hooters. Allen, what were you doing there? I, uh, you know, this is false because the Hooters near me has closed. Do you, what is the closest Hooters to you? I, I only, we only had one. That was the one uh, by Anaheim Stadium, and uh, they're gone. So oh, I don't know where any of the other ones are. Yeah, well, there you go. David mm -hmm. Glenn says, how early do I have to be to see Alan shirtless? You Real early. Be, you, you don't have to be <laughs> that early at all. You can just, I mean... Ask and you shall receive. Alan shirtless. You got it. Um, moving on. 
Rooster Cogburn says, "My God, Chris, please do more of your urban voice." No, this is just tired. This is just tired voice. This is. I was. Um, I went to see the Rose Parade on on uh, Monday, Monday. Yeah. which was super fun. It's up there at like eight a.m. watching the parade. It was a blast. Had a really good time. If you check my uh, Twitter or personal Instagram at that Chris Gore, I posted a bunch of videos. I love the Rose Parade. I'm like a Rose Parade nerd. I love it. It's super fun. Then from there, basically went to a dive bar in Pasadena, the 35er, and I was there from 10 a.m. until later. So there you go. Um, <laughs> so were you at the game, by the way? or I was not at the game. I could have gone to the game. I could have gone to the game. I was just like, I was just, I don't know. I just decided not to. I was under the impression you actually went to the game. No, no. I wanted to go, and then my buddy just didn't have enough money for a ticket. And I was like, I was with a group of people. It was me, Eric Weber, uh, Dante James, and my friend Mark Atkinson. And so we just watched games all day. Um, we watched uh, the Rose Bowl, of course. Then we watched the horribly tragic uh, Monday night football game. Mm. Uh, that yeah. was not a good, not a good beginning to 2023. When you had that happen and you had what happened to Jeremy Renner, really it was like a day of bad news yeah. accompanied by some football and drinking. So there you are. CD Stein 69 says, Hail Chris Allen and the FT chat. Gore, you and Weber's back and forth last night was hilarious. Does he chicken out on debating you over Babylon on, on today's stream? I predict he will chicken out. Checking my text messages. Nothing from Eric. Yeah. As per usual, he is uh he's probably working out at the gym. I know. He could log in between reps. That's all I can say. He could log in at the gym and, then, and he could be super aggro uh angry Eric Weber trying to convince me. Uh, I will be happily debate him. We might save that for Friday. No, I the after sun. That's the debate I want to see. Well, you've seen after sun. Yes, I have. Uh, we never did a formal review of it. I did not enjoy that movie. I, think I uh, it's way you know, overrated. I, my mistake was uh, watching it at home, and it soon became background noise about halfway through. Yeah, uh, Eric, I know was very affected by that movie. I think it is a kind of movie we see at Film Threat very often. After Sun is a, um, it's a, it's a first time director movie. Mm -hmm. It's very self-indulgent and personal. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's, But it's uh, very much a you are there, almost like a cinema mm -hmm. verite documentary, but it's a narrative film. And it's about a father and a daughter on vacation. And it's a memory. The daughter is now older. It's a memory of her father on this vacation they had together. And it's very much like matter of fact, like slice of life. Mm -hmm. And I found it boring it was and and look i have a daughter right i yeah. have a daughter uh a daughter who i treasure dearly and and i thought this movie uh was very typical of a kind of movie that we see at film threat and i've seen that kind of movie done better i think the ending kind of brought it home but at the same time it's not it's a long way to get there yeah yeah it's, it, it's being way overpraised uh, I would say the same about women talking. If Eric Weber had the courage to come on the stream and talk to us right now, I would tell him all this. He, he we're, he's seeing, he's like be really affected by these movies that you and I see all the time. These mm -hmm. small indie movies, and some of them yeah. are good, and some of them are just very um, seen it before. Yeah. So, I mean, After Sun is very indicative of a lot of the dramas we get here. Yes. You no, know, this one just happened to make it to the big theaters and and have uh, award recognition behind it. Can I can I tell you why I think that is, Alan? Why? Because a lot of films at that level, especially when they're from first time directors, mm -hmm. come from people that are connected and have lots of money. We're talking about a rich family. Mm -hmm. And this uh, and and so this film was able to kind of persevere and make it through because of connect probably someone who's very connected was able to get it distributed by a 24 mm -hmm. and um yeah yeah 
I, I, I think, I th- you know, look, I used to naively go to Sundance and go, wow, I thought everybody was Kevin Smith when I went to Sundance. Mm-hmm. When I went to Sundance, I thought everybody was just a Kevin Smith, a guy who sold his comic collection, put money on his credit cards, persevered and made his movie. But it's mostly mm-hmm. it is a hobby for rich people. Yeah. That is now that isn't true of all the movies that we get at Film Threat. That's not entirely true, but the ones that kind of make it through and get distributed by when you realize when you start to go through the the when you start to really dig deep, you find out a lot of it is uh, a lot of privilege is being thrown around. Yeah. And most well, I mean, of it has dollar signs. Yeah. I and mean, think about it. A lot of filmmakers, they struggle just to get the movie made. And there's not enough money beyond that to be able to promote, distri- distribute. Maybe if they're lucky, they'll get into a film festival. Um, but usually that's where the money ends once the movie's been made. And um, yeah. And so you got to have that extra boost to get it, get it to a bigger, a larger audience. Patrick Lemire says Gore throwing bait. <laughs> yes, I am. Call sign Al Ucard for four ninety nine. I vote Alan watches four hour avatar, <laughs> six hour. Wow. Shows disappearing. Uh, army what and out what? and nine hour avatar number three i guess cutting it down now why don't you just so go see avatar and 40x well okay so tell you what this is what we'll do uh i'll take away the time limit once we hit sixty five thousand, i'll go i'll do it but no 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 no, no. but okay, the yeah, time limit 000. is what no but the time limit is it, it's got to still remain at regal theaters and 40x hmm. okay wait what is Alan gonna do when we get to sixty nine thousand? <laughs> sixty nine. Why? Why is it me having to do something? Sixty nine. Like because that's that's your favorite number. You say it all the time on the show. Yeah. Well, we're talking about sixty five right now. Okay, sixty five. Mister Luthor says I would like to nominate the Munsters as the worst of twenty twenty two. Good call. I would say the first half is the worst. I, I I liked it when it actually became the Munsters. <laughs> Bert for two says, I'll be playing at home with my own prediction list. Mm-hmm. Bert, I think I saw you on the Nerdrotic Nooner. Good to see you. So let's get to it. Um, I want to play show and tell. Can I I'm gonna you know yeah. I, I, I want to play I, I'm gonna play we're gonna play show and tell. Alan, go grab what you got for and so any anything you got for for the holidays for the holidays i'm, I'm trying to type over okay that. here i'll grab the one thing the one thing I'm misspelling show and tell can't do this here we go all right folks show and tell time show and tell time it's happening. It's here. It's happening. We're going to, I'm, I'm, I want to, cause I got some really amazing stuff. And I also got some letters from some people and Christmas cards. I checked the mailbox yesterday. So let's go through that before we get to yeah. uh, the yeah. Alan and I going through our top and bottom. So to speak. Yeah. I mean, I got one thing, uh, not see, including, not including the wire transfer from Disney. Right. Okay. Good. That's good to know. What'd you, what did you get? What I get? Okay, this is from the family. Uh, yes, my my Spider-Man t-shirt. You got a Spider-Man t-shirt? Yeah. It's sweet. There you go. Love it. Is you it because it. you like Spider-Man? I do like Spider-Man. All right, well, cool. Uh, uh, I liked Spider-Man back in the day when I was reading Spider-Man. <laughs> I got from my friend Shane Mackey from... Uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, sent me an El Topo poster uh, signed by the artist. I believe he got this at Dragon Con. Oh, sweet. Look at this El Topo poster. Is this crazy or what? Mm -hmm. I love it. Love that. So he got me that poster. Um, I also got a lot of... I'm going to put this over here carefully. I got a lot of letters here from people. Uh, Shane sent me this. Okay, the Deadly Prey Gallery. Is where he got that poster, um, which is pretty cool. Um, also, I got like Shuxi sent us a, I have Christmas cards 
Here's one Christmas card from Shuxi. I'm not going to read it, but there we go. Uh, nice Christmas card. Got some Christmas stickers, which are interesting stickers here. More Christmas Christmas cards here, although I hate the ones with glitter on them. The ones with glitter are not going to, but this is, this is another Christmas, a lot of, a lot of Christmas stuff. And then somebody sent in, this is really cool. It's a, it's an envelope and I don't know what's in it. I haven't even opened it yet, but I think this is a drawing of me and um, I can't show the address, uh, but check this out. It's from South Carolina. <laughs> Apparently that's me on a live stream. I think that's you. Yeah. It's you, Simba. So there you go. Should I open this up? Sure. I don't want to ruin the drawing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up right now. Yeah, my voice is just a little hoarse from all the, you know, and I was hanging out with Weber actually. Eric Weber, Dante James, and Mark. We were hanging out at the bar in Pasadena, just watching football, hanging out, doing that. Okay. I'm trying to open this carefully. Because I don't want to ruin the ruin the envelope here, and it's filled with oh my god! I don't even know if I can show this on camera. I don't think I can show this on camera. It's some comic books, a CD. Can I show this? Are you supposed to sign all those? I'm not. No, no, no. This isn't for signing. This is just just sort of some gifts. So, tales from the rock and roll. So there you go. I'm gonna check this out later when I can more thoroughly examine it so you never know what's going to happen when we're opening one of these yeah I'm, some of these things i don't think i can show um oops sorry about <laughs> oh, shoot. uh but also i got something really cool um my girlfriend got me can i show you one thing i got here she got me war of the gargantuas action figures check this out there's <laughs> the green gargantua and I have the brown gargantua as well. But you go to J Town and buy that, or she must have, no. I think she got these at San Diego Comic Con oh. secretly. Okay. She got them at San Diego Comic Con. So, so there you go. I'm gonna now. What else did you get? You got more than just a T-shirt, Alan. No, a lot of it was cash. Plus, <laughs> plus I do most of the shopping for a. Uh, oh for, really? Yeah. So you know. a bunch of red envelopes, then, so to speak. The, the the women in my life get much more than I do. I, I'm surprised. I really, I really, uh, I, I, I made out. I feel like I really got, um, yep. I don't know. Well, the, key there than... is, the key there is you're not married. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. What can you say? Uh, let's go back to the chat here. We got a couple comments. Patrick Lemire says Disney paid Alan and FTX shares. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. It's like they knew something. I don't know. But, but my account, I'm only locked out of my account. I'm sure I'll be able to access that one day. Uh, Solomon Kane 66 says, but does he like Miles Morales? Lol. Seems like a silly argument. I, I mean, I'd like, I bought Mar Miles Morales when he first uh, appeared on the scene. The, in, in the Ultimate, comic book? In the, in the Ultimate Universe, yeah. You know, so I have the, I have the, the first 12 issues from Michael, Brian Michael Bendis and I actually liked it, but um, it, it just it confounds me. The controversy confounds me. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that there's much controversy around it. I think that it, he's a very different than Peter Parker. Yeah, I, I you know he was what junior higher at that time. Yeah, you know, when he first came in, uh, the story was different. Also, you're you're coming off of Peter Parker's death at that point, and so I, I think the problem I have, and this is why I just stopped reading Marvel, is when they. You know, tried to horn in a reason to bring Miles into the six one six, and uh, mm. you know to collapse everything. And I'm like, okay, I'm out. You know, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, all right, should we get right? Oh, wait, one last comment here. We'll go with Texas. Toxic Waltz N8 says so. Netflix canceled eighteen ninety nine, but they all but confirmed that it was not necessarily the viewership, but the completion rate. If the networks did this to Seinfeld or The Office in season one, they'd be toast. <laughs> well, I think part of the problem with, to, to just go a, a layer deeper on this, I think part of the problem with streaming is you make all the shows 
and then start showing them. There's no threat of cancellation because you order a full season. What they used to do back in the day is not only would they, you know, order the season, right? So you'd write 12 scripts, 13 scripts, whatever mm -hmm. the order was, 22 scripts, but you were making them and putting them out at the same time. Yeah. Now, why is that better? It's better because you get the feedback loop of the audience. So for example, in episode one of say Seinfeld uh, for a particular season, you could introduce a character named Newman and Newman is either going to resonate with the audience or not resonate with the audience, right? So, so if Newman resonates with the audience, great. Maybe we can write Newman back into mm -hmm. a script in episode eight, which we haven't shot yet, or episode 12, which we haven't shot yet. You get that feedback loop and, and that the feedback loop and the audience being a part of the creation of shows is what's hurting streaming. They're doing, they're, they're going, the great thing about network television is you were making the show as the show was coming out. So you might have three or four episodes in the can before the show begins to air, but then suddenly the show airs and you notice, well, this minor character or this villain, people love this villain. You have to have this villain come back. So then you would rewrite later episodes to accommodate things mm -hmm. that the audience loved or hated. The last time this really was effective was for the TV show Lost. The audience was a big part of the show um, in terms of which characters were popular, which characters weren't popular, and, and you could make tweaks to it. We do not have the luxury of that now. And that is, this. that's why streaming comes off as so, um, some uh, antiseptic. What, what are your thoughts, Alan, on what no, I, just I mean, you're absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, you, you brought the positive example. Uh, I'll bring up the negative. You know, shows shows that were not doing well got that instant feedback. And uh, so the networks can either cancel them or start making improvements, start right. changing right. characters. You know, where did uh, where the honey, Cunningham's oldest son go? You know, uh, you, know you, get right. to, you get to make these changes. You know, it, it'll be interesting because... You know, they only ordered half a season of Quantum Leap. Uh, they're now about to go into the second half where they got the mid-season order. And we'll see, are they learning this lesson? And we'll see if this show improves or not. Well, it's it's. I think it's the thing that like a lot of people like to sit here and dissect like, here's what's wrong with streaming. It's the binge model. Mm -hmm. It's the, I think, I think a bigger impact is the feedback loop, not including the audience. Yeah. By not including the audience, you you've taken a very necessary um, and very useful piece of feedback out of the hands of the creatives. So the creatives don't have the benefit of getting audience reaction. It used to be, you know what it used to be? People wrote letters to television networks. It's very famous, famously, the original Star Trek series from which launched in 1966 was saved by a letter writing campaign. It was about to be canceled. Certain characters were very popular. You know, the network didn't didn't really love Mr. Spock. So, it's interesting to have that um mm -hmm. that feedback loop and and what's really sad to me, David Glenn says it's writing in a bubble. Yep. David Glenn who's a member. Oh, by the way, I'm just going to share screen for a second. Hey, let me just uh, let me just pick up on the point while you're doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but um, Kenobi, Rings of Power, those were two shows that were severely affected by this. That that you knew it was so bad from the first episode that it was never going to get better by the end, and and that turned out to be right because there was no feedback. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. But um, yeah, no, that's that's my thoughts on that. Is that um. That And now the thing that's really distressing is how much the creators hate their own audiences. Mm -hmm. That is just unconscionable to me. You work in an industry where you have the privilege to sit at a desk and write with a blank page and be creative, to be paid to be creative, to be on a set, to act and speak the words and, and maybe have some input into a line reading or maybe changing something and just you play in a sandbox for money. 
and to have disdain for the audience, which is is the person you're trying to please, is is to me it's unconscionable. Mm -hmm. And and now having this very arrogant way of looking at the audience, and you see it, you see it happen constantly. It's it's disgusting. It's disgusting to see and. I really wish there were more people in the industry that understood that the position they're in, like how lucky they are to be where they are. No matter what pay scale you're at, what you're doing, you get to pretend and and imagine for a living. That's just... <laughs> they that's fired crazy. all those people. <laughs> they did fire all those people. Yeah. Uh, and David Glenn, you are a member. I just want to let you know, hey, guess what? Today we're doing a giveaway. It's the three-disc set... What? A blonde. It's the Maryland stories. Um, it's movies about Marilyn Monroe, and uh, it includes a lot of behind the scenes documentaries. I have five copies of the DVD to Is give this away. A real thing? What are you talking about? These are the actual three movies, or yes, yeah, <laughs> okay. So it's a three disc set, but it comes basically if you're a fan of Marilyn, yeah. Um, I have five copies to give away to members only. If you uh, check our community tab around when the show ends today, check the community tab and you'll see how you can be one of the five winners. The uh, publicist who represents the movie says, hey, I got DVDs to give away. I said, well, I'll get you some addresses. So the minute the stream ends or shortly there, I don't know exactly what time I scheduled the post. If you're a member, you'll see it. Um, and be one of the first five people. And I like to give away. I like to give stuff away for free. I love it. I love it. Don't you, Alan? I love giving things away. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have nothing to give away. I feel bad now. All right. Some more comments here. And I got a couple other things. Um, Patrick Lemire says, it's weird that crazy Tom Cruise is the only one that gets it. Absolutely. He did that couple things. One, he shot that, that, little intro that preceded Top Gun Maverick. Amazing. So great. Like when you saw Top Gun Maverick in the theater, Tom Cruise was just like, thank you for being here and supporting going to see films in a theater. Like this is where we are now. Then when he did, excuse me, that stunt where he jumped out of the, what football game was that? I don't know what it was. Was that on Thanksgiving? Was it a football game or was, I, I thought it was for the movie. No, it was for the movie, but I think they aired it during a football game and then put it online um, where he just jumps out. It's like, it's our honor to entertain you. Like, I mean, I can't wait for the next Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Chris, would be cool to see a man cave tour of your house for this channel. I'm curious to see your collections and such, says MK Solid 82 I will do that. I will do it. I'll shoot it on video and just upload it. How about that? Hey, we've got almost 500 people watching us, just short of 500 people. Hey, slap that like button. Please slap that like button. It helps us get the channel recommended. And subscribe to the channel if you're no longer subscribed. I mean, if you're no longer subscribed, what am I saying? If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, yeah, speaking of closing that, in on 65,000. So. Closing in. Um, speaking of that, I'm going to see Will Smith today. Yes, so will I. Are you going to that screening? I am. I am. The the man who's appeared in more film thread episodes, well, this yeah, than anyone else other than us. Uh cool. Well, I'm gonna be there, Alan. I'll get there. I think I'm gonna get there about six or six thirty. Okay. Yeah, last I, time I went there, you, you gotta get there early or the, you'll be in line for valet forever. Yeah, exactly. So you gotta get there literally right at six, pull mm -hmm. in. Um yeah, so I'll see you there tonight. So Alan and I, we'll take some video and we'll show it on Friday. How about that? So we're going to a screening of Emancipation. Director Antoine Fuqua. Is, is that the correct pronunciation? Yeah, Antoine Fuqua. Fuqua. He's going to be there and Will Smith. And there's a chance that Alan will get to meet Will Smith. Yeah, there's a chance you could meet him too. Well, let's get, we should get a photo of the three of us yeah. if he'll do it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, Okay. I don't want to reveal any back secrets, but um, and what, then what, what are the what, no reveal secrets, Alan? Well, I think I, I I mean when I went to see women talking, they were like really wanting us critics to to meet Jesse Buckley. 
So um, I love Jesse Buckley. Yeah, she was great. She was great. She was great. She's not the problem with that movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. To me, it was a subject matter. But um, then, speaking of which, are are we seeing RRR this weekend? I got an invitation to see it. I will probably not see it this weekend. Ah. Uh, I will. Uh, I I'm I probably just want to see it Monday with the fans. Yeah, I tried I'll to get tickets Saturday. and I didn't get them. I'll be at the Saturday screening because okay. they will be there. Okay, there you go. Uh, Amanda to Wiki uh, has a comment here. Writers only want to please their rich fr- rich friends, not the fans. True, true. Inquisitor Tite Bison says, "Keep a mouth guard close by, just in case you never know." I see. So here's the thing. I don't think it's been long enough to have a sense of humor about it. I don't think you can joke about it. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be saying, what hard. Could say? What could you say to him? <laughs> I, there is nothing. The, he, there is nothing. Hey, look, Patrick Lemire says, keep his wife's name out of your mouth. <laughs> it's going to be hard. I, and like, I'm the type of person that when I, I'm traveling and I go up to like the airline check-in counter and it says no jokes it's like i have to use physical energy to hold back to just hold back from making any kind of remark or joke when i'm told not to joke it's like the worst thing you could say to me yeah i think now he's he's open to dj jazzy jeff questions so uh, we'll we'll see uh and then yeah uh, we already got that comment from Patrick. Always funny to see Patrick Lemire in the um, in the chat. I, I'm I'm pretty much trolling Eric Weber, but in a nice way. He get I mean, like you know, Eric and Eric and I are friends in real life. I see him at a lot of a lot of screenings, um, and we hang out not in things not related to movies. So, but I will, I I will, you know, go at him for comments I disagree with. We have very different tastes. You and I align a little bit more, Alan. We disagree, but we align a little bit more. But Eric and I are like way, like it took me forever to get him to finally see RRR. And he finally admitted, yeah, that movie was good. <laughs> so he um, talks about RRR. All Twisted Up says RRR again, where it's at. It, there's a screening on Monday at the TCL Chinese. It's sold out in less than five minutes. Did you buy tickets or did you? I tried to buy tickets and failed. Okay. Very, very depressing. Uh, but a couple other things um, before we get to. Well, you're, you're bearing the lead there. What's that? Uh, the two stars will be at that screening. Yes, the two stars. That's why I want to go. Yeah. That's why I want to go because the stars, of the movie will be there. I cannot wait. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait. I might want to learn some Telugu uh, just to say hello. Uh, oh, we got some super chats here. Let's get to those. Nikhil Sai for 40. Did Gary watch RRR and had discussion? We did not. Gary did not watch RRR. Uh. Gary is listening to this. I know, Gary, you could have seen RRR in the time you spent going to see Avatar The Way of Water a second time, Gary. You mean know that movie he hated? He hated our, He hated Avatar, saw it a second time. I guarantee if you saw it with your brother-in-law, Gary, watch it with your family, RRR, much better movie than, than Avatar The Way of Water. Much better. Uh, Travis, thank you for that, Nikhil. Travis Crust for five says, just won the film threat release of Hated the Gigi Allen doc on VHS. Did you win it like on eBay? Um, that's great. Yes. Uh, hated the Gigi Allen documentary, which was made by Todd Phillips, Todd Phillips of the hangover series, the Joker and, uh, the upcoming Joker movie. Um, yeah, I film threat was the distributor of his first documentary hated, uh, which is great. (laughs) So fantastic. I think that thing, it might be out of print. That movie. Pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure hated is who's, who's making print. VHS nowadays. Yeah, but let's talk about before we get to our top films. I, I know I'm 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 dragging it, but there are other things that I want to talk about. And thank you, Travis. Thank you for that uh, super chat. I want to talk about Sundance. 
Woo! Need oh, you know what? Glenuccio. I might need like a Sundance. Uh, a su Here, I'm gonna try and type it on my own. Uh, and I need uh something for Megan. I may want to talk about Megan. Give an early reaction to Megan. So I'll need, I'll need that. But I'm gonna do a a banner now, for. Okay. But today was a big Sundance day. Uh, I was online this morning trying to reserve a few screenings here and there. All right. Well, I'm going to throw a little in here. There we go. Yeah. Just moving that up there. Just getting reset. Sundance 2023 predictions. Alan, uh, you and I, um, have, I've been going to the Sundance Film Festival since the 90s. You are have more recently started attending Sundance. Mm -hmm. It um, was something that I look forward to. Now it's become something, something of a chore for me. And uh, I, I am not attending. I'm. Uh, you are attending virtually. Yes, we have uh, three people attending on our behalf. Three people attending. We also have some other people who write for us on occasion that will contribute reviews. But um, I have some problems with Sundance of late. This is the first year that Sundance is back from you know, being on hiatus. For the last two years, the Sundance Film Festival has not been an in-person festival. It has been online only. This is now a hybrid version. So Sundance is taking place in Park City, Utah. It's also taking place online. And critics and you at home, you can actually attend Sundance online, so to speak, by buying tickets. Just go to Sundance.org to get details for that. So it is now something that's more open to the public. But what do we think about Sundance? I have mixed thoughts about Sundance. Sundance, I used to associate with people like Sundance was the film festival that Kevin Smith was discovered. A lot of other filmmakers like Darren Aronofsky, among others, uh, Steven Soderbergh, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, played the Sundance Film Festival in 1989. And that was the first year that Sundance, I believe 1989, Sundance changed its name to the Sundance Film Festival. It was previously called the United States Film Festival. Pretty weird. Uh, but yeah, changed its name in 89. Steven Soderbergh played there. A lot of people have, had their films discovered there. It, it's considered one of the top discovery film festivals a festival where an unknown person can go there and become famous. But a lot has happened. Sundance has grown huge. It's become huge. It's also the city has become something of a circus during Sundance with promoters that have nothing to do with Sundance trying to sell energy drinks and uh, you know brands of clothing where they have gifting suites. If you're a celebrity and you have a savvy publicist, you can get you can get into the gifting suite where you can get all sorts of free stuff. Your only obligation being that you promote it. It is beyond chaotic in Park City, Utah, in particular on Main Street during Sundance, where you have um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen women in the freezing cold at Sundance in open toed high heel shoes. It's weird, but you see it. But Sundance, you know, began with a mission to champion small, unknown filmmakers. It has now gotten too big. Uh, is it being compromised by studios? Now, a lot of the films, I and I did my research, a lot of films playing at Sundance premiere at Sundance, and then they're on HBO Max a week later. Mm -hmm. Is that really... now? That movie that's playing there, you could say, ah, whatever, it's good promotion, fine to help the movie. But seriously, you took a slot away from a small indie filmmaker that could have actually uh, benefited from the recognition. I'll just show you. This was the thing that made me think to myself, maybe I'm not going to go. Maybe I'm not going to go this year. Because I did have a, um, I did have a badge. I could have gone. And I chose not to. And it's because of this movie. <laughs> this movie is premiering at the Sundance Film Festival, which champions independent filmmakers. It's the amazing Maurice. 
and it's an official selection of the 2023 Sundance Film Festival. It plays at Sundance, and then about a week later on February 3rd, it's in theaters everywhere. The Amazing Maurice, a CGI movie uh, with voice acting by David Tennant is in there. Oh, there you go. Uh, and it's based on the book by Terry Pratchett. This Am I going to go to Sundance and see that movie, or am I just going to see it at the Burbank AMC 16 a week later? And when I saw that this movie was premiering at Sundance, I thought to myself, what has happened to the Sundance Film Festival? And it's it's called into question what the mission of Sundance is. Why are they doing this? And this is not the only movie that's like this. Now, to be fair, Sundance is also playing a lot of other movies that no one else is going to see. That no one will see. A lot of small indie movies. Mm -hmm. A lot of movies with celebrities. The celebrity factor. And I think what it is, is I don't blame Sundance as much as I blame lazy journalists who only see the big movies. And that's never been what Film Threat is about. Never. We look for the small uh, movies in, in need of discovery, in need of attention. So, Alan, um, my thoughts on Sundance are this, and I'll, I'll just, I'll bot here's my bottom line. The Sundance Film Festival is not as important as it used to be. Part of it is the erosion of the audience and the brand because of the last two years of being online only. Now it's opened up. Anybody can go to Sundance. In That's a good thing, by the way. Anybody can get um, your online tickets so anyone can see movies playing Sundance. It's another revenue stream for them. But I question the quality of the films that they are choosing to play. And a lot of it is, and this is not going to be, of course, it's going to be taken the wrong way. But a lot of movies are of a lesser quality but they're selected to play the festival simply because of the identity of the people who made the movie. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so Alan, I want to hear your thoughts. My thoughts are Sundance is not as important as a festival as it used to be. And it's, um, we will be covering it. We've got, I think more than six people covering it. Right. Alan? Kind of. We have no, cause I kept taking away credentials for not not which nefarious is, reasons. Which is, can I say no, for administrative reasons? I, well, I, no, gonna... which is great. Which is great. The one fucking outlet, <laughs> film threat, that will cover anything. You take credentials away yeah. from our journalists. Thank you very much, people in the press office. Yeah. Who don't even know who the to... fuck we are. Yeah, because we we fucking assholes. The 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 we covered one year, I believe I want to say 75 to 80 percent of the movies that, that showed there. The one outlet that covers like 80 percent of the movies playing there, you just give us less and less access. Really smart Sundance. As yeah. someone who wrote a fucking book on fucking film festivals, I can't get fucking credentials. This is going to get clipped and I'm going to look. Yeah, at I know. I know. Uh, That's okay. I don't yeah, give a shit. I, got, um, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I would think, I would think that, um, you know, I, I would just think that, you know, and I actually, I am the one, by the way, to be clear, Sundance is not to blame for me not having credentials. I chose to not have them. Mm -hmm. I made the choice. I said, if, well, if we can only get X number of people, I am giving, I want to give that up to one of our writers who will, who will watch more movies than I will and will write reviews. That's better for the filmmakers because what am I keeping in mind? The filmmakers. I'm keeping in mind the filmmakers, the filmmakers getting coverage, the filmmakers getting reviewed on film threat, yes. the filmmakers getting on the, you know, Rotten Tomatoes, you know, right. Or whatever. Right. They care about stuff like that. And, we are, we're gonna, and weirdly we'll get to review those movies in spite of Sundance. Cause those, those, those publicists are coming directly to us to want to get their movies they, reviewed. They come directly to us because they realize well, the press office at Sundance doesn't like, has no idea who film threat is. Well, really what it is, is it's the gifted and privileged um, young people who don't know the field they don't know who anyone is and they're just looking to get their fucking friends in and so something like film threat yes it's a legacy indie film outlet but who covers these movies like we do nobody 
nobody. Because I guarantee there's a lot of other outlets there that are covering indie film, but they're not covering the small movies. They're not covering the shorts. They're not reviewing short films. Yeah, I they're going to be at the Eccles Theater. They're going to be at the Eccles Theater the entire time. For all the premieres, wow. but they don't get the smaller indie movies, the movies in the Frontier program, I even, yeah. even know. I guarantee at the library the and at the yeah. Prospector. You know? I guarantee most of the journalists going there don't even know what the fucking Frontier program is. I just get a little annoyed because I've been doing this since fucking 1985. Okay? And I don't have... I'm not rich. I don't own a house because I live in California. I don't have a butler, obviously. I make I make a decent living, lower middle class, covering this shit. You would think at some point, at the very least, since I have not achieved any level of financial success, I would have at least achieved some level of fucking respect. Not too much to ask since I've been doing this since 1985. And very rare that I get pissed off about this, but I am pissed off about this. So what I say to you is Sundance is not, not as important as it used to be because the amazing Maurice is playing there and not the next Kevin Smith or Carly Smith or name a type. I don't give a shit. This movie doesn't need help. It's opening in theaters. Who was pulling favors to get this movie in? Bullshit. Alan, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So I, I went to the Sundance right before the pandemic. And uh, that was my first time. And I was really excited to look uh, and looking forward to it. And when I got there, what I realized was that Sundance exists because the big studios are there to A, get their get their, I would say, mid mid to high budget movies out there. They're indies, the ones that aren't going to get uh, the broad appeal. They're going to they're gonna have a spotlight. Uh, and so Sundance relies on the big studios to, to go to the Eccles Theater, bring in a large audience, bring in all the celebrities. And then also Sundance relies on the fact that the big outlets are going to be covering that. Uh, and then everyone else gets kind of pushed to the side. You know, the 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 upside for any indie filmmaker uh, being at Sundance is you will get exposure uh, more than any other film festival uh, at this time of the year. You know, not including Cannes and Toronto, which is later on in the year. Um, and so when I went there, it was like, uh, you know, where where are those indie films? And and I did get to see a couple of them. Uh, but but when I was today was a big day because we we could reserve seats or uh, seats uh, for screenings. And the thing I noticed with the indie films, you know, not the stuff playing at the Eccles, but the indie films are all celebrity driven. Um, like uh, I just got one uh, a new movie uh, being directed by Randall Park. Uh, you know, this is you know the, the other movies. Last year was After Yang. It had Colin uh, Colin Farrell in it. Um, so it seems like that. The, the small indies are getting slowly nudged out um, by films that have a low budget to them, but now have a name behind it. And that name, of course, will appear at Sundance. Um, so, yeah. So, like, when you brought up the, the idea of, hey, how about we not go to Sundance? I was like, yeah, let's not go to Sundance. <laughs> uh, no. I don't want to freeze my ass off for this. And uh, and quite frankly, I I am much more looking forward to South by Southwest than I am for Sundance. Well, I I just hope we get. Uh, first of all, I'm a little late on this video. Right a freaking IKEA chair. I should have done that at the beginning. Yeah, but well, uh, Lenucio can can put that. Uh, Lenucio will work his magic. Yeah. Work his magic. Yeah. Um, but look. Uh, we've been covering Sundance since I think, uh, no, we were, uh, since 92, 93. Yeah, every, every year I've been here, we've, we've covered Sundance and, and we've had major presence at Sundance. But the problem is no one gives a shit at su who works at Sundance. Now, Eugene Hernandez, uh, Eugene Hernandez, um, is a guy who is one of the founders of IndieWire. He, uh, used to run the New York film, very prestigious New York film forum. He is taking over as uh, the director of the Sundance Film Festival next year. Hmm. I'm very excited to see Eugene take over 
because Eugene, when he was a kid and lived in Los Angeles, he attended Sundance on behalf of Film Threat back in the day. He 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 I, I sent he got Sundance credentials under Film Threat. He attended, and then like about a year or two later, he created IndieWire. Good for him. He started mm -hmm. his own thing. And I ran into him recently. I'm ex I'm excited to see. I wonder if there's going to be a major change. Now, I do think that some of these tentpole, big celebrity-driven movies, they are important to feature because it, it helps bring in the media. At the same time, they got to push the smaller indies. They got to push the smaller indies. I mean, this, these, this is where, where do you think, where do you think people like Christopher Nolan and James Gunn came from? And by the way, Christopher Nolan's first movie played um, called Following played Slam Dance. Slam Dance plays those movies. Yeah, the kind of movies we're talking about, they're all at Slam Dance, and hopefully we'll have the resources to be able to cover some of Slam Dance. Uh, we'll do our best. We'll do our best. Yeah, on Slam Dance. Slam Dance really is the really like the spirit of what Sundance used to be from the '90s. That's that's currently at 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 Slam Dance, in my opinion. How how's my camera going? I noticed it had like this piece of film on it. Yeah, I took it off. I don't know if you it's know. I realize. I think it's your computer that's kind of washing your your face out. How is my computer doing it? The oh, because the yeah, the light coming from the the monitor is uh, the light from the monitor is, is weirdly uh, harsh on your face at the moment. Oh wow! Well, I don't know how to do this without the monitor. I know that that's the catch. How do I? How do I fix it? That's it's got to be what it is. Yeah. Oh my god! I don't know how to do. I need. You know what? I need a professional. This is out there to everybody. I need someone to help me with my setup. Yeah. I am not a technically, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not a noob. I'm not a boomer. But when it comes to something like this, I would love for someone to just set up my, my YouTube space so that actually I won't be annoying to watch. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, clearly the issue I think for you is lighting. Uh, you know, I, I had to play around with that when I first started doing this. So right now, I only have one light going on in this room. Well, at least it's not because I'm ugly. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm hopefully easy on the eyes for people. I'm going to turn down the brightness. If I turn down the brightness, does that help? Yeah. I like, don't know. It... Yeah. You know, I think I think we're okay for this stream. We could futz around with it. All right. Well. During the, until the next I time. obviously don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I literally have my one ring light here at 1%. So one ring, anybody yeah. would like to give me some technical advice. Maybe there's a YouTube explainer video that can help, but you know, it is what it is. Um, it's better than the other camera. I can just say that. So there you go. Uh, let's, go to your, yeah, let's go to some chat comments and questions there. Uh, let's see. The Lost Tales became a YouTube member. Welcome. Thank you for that. That's awesome. Join our Discord, by the way. Yes, join our Discord. It's in the community tab. Gamer Word, it's because the background is all dark, so the, so the sensor thinks it needs to be lighter. Okay, thank you for that Gamer Word. I will work on, I'll put yeah, like a... The, yeah, I think that was the issue before even, where you needed to light your background. Okay, kind of balance off that's what that. I'll do. That's what I'll do. Thank you, Gamer Word. D. Martin, Disney should buy Sundance. They could premiere their next Star <laughs> Wars movie there. Right, well, South by Southwest premiered an extra documentary that was on the DVD release of The Last Jedi, premiered it at South Bay Southwest. All festivals are guilty of this. Good Wrench, who's a member, thank you for that. I hope smaller decentralized creators will be the future of movies and entertainment. I hope that too. These grand festivals, galas, Hollywood, all need to be flushed in favor of authentic new filmmakers, couldn't agree more. Gamer yeah. Word says Sundance just kind of seems like a mainstream circle jerk now. In a way, it is. And I think it's changing. I don't think the money is there. You know, the, the financial incentive for the big studios to put a lot of investment in their Sundance. Yes, it is not. Persiv444 says Chris is destroying an Ikea chair off camera. <laughs> Holy hand grenades. This isn't out of malice. It's passion. Films have been Chris's life since well forever. You are 100% Holy hand grenades. Thank you for your comment. Snakes and funerals. Chris is off camera smoking a joint. I actually don't. I'm not against marijuana. I'm not a smoker. I don't. I've never smoked. I've tried smoking, 
because I thought it looked cool, but I just can't do it. I don't, I just don't like it. So, but I will do an edible every once in a while, but I don't really have uh, a lot of experience with marijuana. Uh, <laughs> All Twisted Up said, blood pressure, Chris, <laughs> now. And Alan Horkin says, the amazing Maurice, already Rotten Tomatoes, 83%, 12 reviews. <laughs> now, Luke, Luke and Luke and further 88 for two pounds says happy 2023. Happy 2023 to you, Luke. And by no, oh, it's, it's look, Luke, no further. Oh, Luke, no further. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> all right. All right. Luke, no further 88. Thank you for that. And I hope you laughed when I did that incorrectly. All twisted up. You're both easy on the eyes. Goring are the Cindy Crawford and Christy Brinkley of the film review world snakes and funerals chris gore was not here to be easy on the eyes for you that was a frost quote i did not <laughs> i did not realize that uh you got to see gary beekler's new video that he put out it's already reached a million views less than a week less than a week out it's already got a million views is Pretty it about amazing. the ratings uh it's the top five woke disasters of 2022 oh, okay. uh my kingdom for a film is a member what is the best way to get noticed today as an indie filmmaker if the main festivals are no longer doing what they were created to do one find distribution you have to find get your film distributed how do you do that play a film festival there are you will there's a film festival for every movie okay so um go to filmfreeway.com register your movie and try to find you got to do a lot of research otherwise you're just spending money willy-nilly on submission fees um, you'll find a film festival that matches kind of your movie, depending on the genre, size, et cetera. Um, the other thing is send your movie to Film Threat, right? You could submit your movie to Film Threat, and that is probably one of the best ways to do it is to submit your movie to Film Threat. Go to filmthreat.com. There's a little button that says submit. You can submit your movie, and that that is a good way. And the other thing is to just reach out to other reviewers. Unfortunately, the problem is since everybody, uh, every critic, you know, is mostly focused on Disney, mm -hmm. Star Wars, Pixar, Marvel, big movie, big movie, big movie. They don't give a shit about independence. So there are very few outlets that cover independent film. Yeah. And there's the no one. Will, the, the only time they will cover independence is at Sundance and at the big festivals. Right. So that's unfortunately. The other thing I would say about film festivals is. Uh, build an email list when you go there have people just start an email list build a fan base and and i think you're going to find good results from it it's fairly cheap to do then you get survey monkey or mailchimp and you can start you know uh promoting your film and your next film and your next film uh let's see keep going with the chat uh, comments here patrick lemire i am re-watching that <laughs> rant shakshi says go a rant go a rant go a rant cd stein 69 says preach it brother chris my kingdom for a film. An angry Chris is a Chris I respect. Appreciate the honesty. I just don't like whenever I like. I can hear myself getting a little bit, a little too arrogant. Like, like I deserve this, and it's like oh, yeah. I don't think you're getting that. there. You're getting there. Yeah, VDR says Chris is having his network moment, and Snakes and Funeral says I hope this rant goes viral. Well, we'll split off a separate video from it. So yeah, Good Wrench says light him up. Mr. Gore and horror punk horror punk back Gore rant incoming. Damn says snakes and funeral and Patrick Lemire. Good wrench just became a new member. Thank you for that. Patrick Lemire says everything starts cool. And then the man co-ops it comic-con South by Southwest. Yeah. Uh, you're a hundred percent true. Yeah. It starts off. It starts off like sort of like on a mission, right? Like Sundance was that way. It's the small thing. It was like, why would you go to some weird, mountain ski town to like watch indie movies it makes no sense um and then it just gets co-opted comic-con got co-opted south by southwest definitely all of it um by the way i'm excited to see uh this year's land acknowledgement that will play before every screening we can you can you clip that so we can show people what we're talking about yeah, okay I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to do that i'm, I'm pretty sure that, i'm pretty sure they'll post it on their on their youtube channel which no one watches. If you're watching it, like, you know, if you're watching the land acknowledgement and you're just in Burbank, California, does it make sense even? 
So, yeah. Um, if you want to get your film noticed, then just call the public racist before it's released. Yeah. Notice that only happens with stuff that's terrible. <laughs> uh, Crux Riaju, CH, period, says, Chris, can you get your contacts together in one room and seriously discuss making your own film festival? I think you guys have a big enough following with all your interviews that it'd be worth a try. Yes, that is something that a lot of people have discussed with us doing a film threat festival, which would be a small event where you would buy, you know, we could do that. Maybe we could do it, but it would start as like a weekend, you know. Well, like what, if it, what if it was in conjunction with award this? Could it's so funny. People say, Yeah, you know, the film threat award festival. It's like, no, it's an award show. <laughs> uh that's um, you know, like here's the thing. I'm already doing too many things. If you want to help with that, let me know. I'm easy to reach. Just go to filmthreat.com slash contact. Toxic Waltz N8. Yeah, this is a sham. Good call on not going. Patrick Lemire says Sundance and South by Southwest are grotesque versions of the original idea now. The corpse figured it out. Wow. And David Glenn says, how's the food? At Sundance? At Sundance? Excuse me, the food is great. No, it's not. Um, it's not? It's not? I don't know where you went, but nothing was over. Not enough. I know the good restaurants. Okay. I know the good I, restaurants. I mean, finding lunch was almost impossible. Uh, well, a there. quick lunch. That's the thing. Quick. Yeah. Just gonna grab something and go. Toxic Waltz N8. Oh, they're going to be spreading a lot of cash around this year in anticipation of the strike in June, right? They need to grab some stuff for their compromised mm -hmm. slate. That is probably true. You're going to see a lot of little indie movies get bought and built up. And David Glenn, this is uh, my favorite remark. Like Burning Man used to be fun until Holly Weird invaded. <laughs> That's so true for so many things. We're just like, it started by a small group of people who have like a vision and like, hey, let's have a party with our friends. And then corporations um, end up turning up and ruining it. Yeah. Well, it's funny because um, we've talked about it with, with Film Threat. We, we were small and so people ignored us. And I think we're getting to that point where people aren't ignoring us. And you can tell by the comments we get sometimes. Yeah. Just out of the blue content uh con comments what like out of the blue like what like on youtube or on the website uh, we do have no comments. like on on yeah on youtube online in our yeah our, our youtube comments i see it a lot i think we'll see it once in a while like we got some weird someone tagged us uh, with some stupid meme about something you said out of context what and, was uh, it oh I yeah the the meme was that you hated willow because it had a lesbian lead yeah, that's not true, though. That's, I mean, that's talk about it out of context. There must be somebody. I don't know. I never saw the comment. Yeah, well, the person the person has no following, so it's like. So it was like someone um, with like uh, they, they have like two followers or ten followers, and yeah, ten followers. trying to get traction. Yeah, they're, they're just baiting. Yeah. yeah. So, but and, again, we're we're getting to that size where we're we're inviting that kind of attack. Oh well, that's not good. Well, no, growing is good. It's just, there's a price to it. Right, exactly. All right, let's um, let's pivot for a minute. Let's pivot for a minute. And I'm going to take this banner down. But let's talk about what we're looking forward to in 2023 before we get to our, I'm putting it at the end. There's a reason they put like coverage of weather and sports at the end of the newscast. It's because they want you to stick around. So uh, I am going to present, and the funny thing is I sent this around to a bunch of people and then they used it on their shows, which is fine. I gave this to you, Alan. Yeah, I'm pulling mine up right now because because I can't read that. Well, I'm going to zoom in. Okay. I'm zoom in. Is there, will it, will it allow me to? I know. Well, for me, it looks pretty good. Okay, cool. So this is, wait, I can't zoom around. Right, like I can't. Can I? Oh, okay, like slide back and forth. Oh, I can. All right, that's fine then. Okay, well, so you can get to the third, the third column. That's readable. That's readable yeah. enough. The well, third column is twenty twenty four, so we can skip that. Yeah, yeah, we'll skip that one. Um, what movies are you looking forward to in twenty twenty three, Alan? You go first. Okay, so just going down the list here: uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, uh, <laughs> Cocaine Bear. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, definitely Mission Impossible and Oppenheimer. 
and Barbie, I guess. Uh, what else? Not Shazam, John Wick. I hope it's good. Uh, Creed Three. The trailer to Creed Three looks really good. Yes, it does. Yes, um, I agree. Yeah. What else? Sixty-five. Not- Wait, sixty-five is coming out on March seventeenth. Which one is that? 65 it's a science fiction movie with adam driver by the way i will oh. post this i will post this on the community tab for film threat um on youtube in case you want it you want to yeah. you, you also want this sheet yeah. if you want to look at this sheet uh what else what about dungeons and dragons well, yeah dungeons and dragons you know craven the hunter is gonna be interesting to see what what sony can do with that who is playing craven the hunter i have no idea they must be shooting it now, or if, if not already shot. Uh, Paw Patrol, the Mighty Movie. Uh. You're kidding. Me. <laughs> no, I, I yeah, I want to see them destroy the Exorcist. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, so those are the ones that I kind of see off the top of my head. Wonka, I'm not excited about. Yeah, um, no, that seems bizarre. Yeah, Shazam, I'm not. Uh, I was so iffy on the first one. I'm not sure I'm that excited about this one. Super Mario Brothers will be uh, an interesting... It'll be really good or really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Blue Beetle, I know nothing about that. I'm looking forward to The Flash. Because yeah. I keep... Oh, Dune doing... 2. I'm sorry, Dune 2 is... Oh, and Dune, no, Dune 2 is my number one. Yeah. Dune 2 is my number one. So, uh, by the way, I just posted that chart to the community tab on the film threat YouTube channel. So you can get your own copy of it. It's you got to click on it and kind of drag it. Um, but there you go. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to, uh, I don't care about evil dead rise. There's a lot of, there's like less I'm looking forward to Gu- guardians, guardians three, definitely for sure. Um, don't care about little mermaid. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Craven is Aaron Taylor Johnson. Okay. That's, I like him. That guy, like he was in bullet train. I didn't even know it. Um, yeah. The new mission impossible dead reckoning part one, 100% yeah. can't wait for Absolutely. that. Movie. That's going to be big uh, mission impossible Oppenheimer and Barbie. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the Marvels I'm not looking forward to, but I'm really looking forward to talking about it. I think Barbie could be <laughs> interesting. Barbie could be interesting because I like Greta Gerwig. So there you go. But DC's the flash. They're calling it DC's the flash. Yeah. Interesting name. By the way, did I ever talk about the trailer, the, the the sneak peek we got to the Marvels? You did, but refresh my memory. Yeah, you know, it's a. Uh, I'll be honest. It it feels like a it's a girls movie and it's a Disney Channel movie. Wow. You know, it, it's very you know bright colors. The the tone is very older teen girl type uh, type feel to it. All right. Well, yeah, that's what that's why I told you it's not for us. It's it's not for us. But it seems like it seems like something they would just put out on Disney Plus. They probably should if they were smart. What is Untitled Please Don't Destroy Project? I'll take a look. I have no idea what that is. But there also, by the way, just so you're clear, I usually get this list updated about every quarter, and. The these dates are subject to change. For the tentpole movies, they generally don't, unless there's something mm-hmm. big that happens. But this is the list of movies being that have these. This is the list of movies that have made announcements about their theatrical release date. The color purple is is that a remake or is it like coming back which, to the theater? I'm sorry, which one? Tw- on December twentieth, the color purple is that a remake? That's a remake. Yes. Wow. Okay. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, Illuminations Migration. Interesting title. But yeah, Dune Part 2 is my number one thing that I can't wait for. Although if they do it accurate to the book, it's going to be depressing as hell. Because people think the ending of Dune is leading in one direction. It's actually leading in a completely different direction. So there you are. By the way, that untitled untitled, uh, Please Don't Destroy Project... It's essentially it's an SNL film. Okay, but we don't know what it is. Uh, it, it the the byline says it follows three friends who live together when they realize they don't like their life trajectory, 
They set off to find a gold treasure that is ruined, rumored to be buried in the nearby mountains. Okay, that sounds yeah. awful. Sounds like a streaming thing. Anyways, look, it's a, it's a it's an interesting lineup. I will say this: this doesn't include indie movies. These are just major theatrical releases. So this does not include indie movies. It doesn't include movies yet to be announced. For example, movies will be purchased at Sundance. Movies will be purchased at Sundance. And then those movies will be released, um, you know, later in the year. It doesn't include like your Oscar or awards uh, types of films. So these are just major releases from the major from the studios. So oh, the Winnie the Pooh, uh, I believe that's a Fathom event film. Oh, that's the Fathom events, like because that's the horror movie based yeah. on Winnie the Pooh. Yep. Oh, I'll go see that. Yeah, I'll I'm gonna see that in the that theater. I hear it's terrible, but I still want to see it. I know. And then there's 2024. Let's look at 2024. El Muerte. Uh, the Untitled Dirty Dancing sequel. Okay. Oh, no. There you go. Kung Fu Panda 4. King Kong vs. Godzilla 2. The Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs movie. Remember that one? <laughs> oh, my God. Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. There you go. Untitled M. Night Shyamalan thriller. Lord of the Rings, The War of Roar. What is that? Oh, let me look it up. Captain America, New World Order, Furiosa, which is Mad Max, you know, the new Mad Max movie. Garfield, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Okay. Despicable Me 4, Marvel's Thunderbolts. So you have to put Marvel in there. Marvel's Blade. They moved to September 6th. Deadpool 3, Avatar 3, Wicked. And then you've got the Fantastic Four is coming out on valentine's day in 2025 all right well there you go avengers the kang dynasty by the way the lord of the rings that's a an anime fantasy film oh okay let's see uh yeah miranda otto is in it rep reprising her role as eowyn mm -hmm. uh it says that it's based on the peter jackson series interesting and will be released by warner brothers wow well i think warner brothers has to look at like look at their library and say to themselves you know what do we have what do people love harry potter what are the what are these franchises that that really and they love harry potter not fantastic beasts harry potter so i can see them doing a sequel trilogy of harry potter and what happened to his kids i can see that happening so yeah and and i'm pretty sure daniel uh daniel radcliffe will not be in it why i think he's done with the franchise plus i don't think they i still think they're hurt over uh jk and her comments i i i don't know i don't have a problem yeah. with jk's comments i think that most people don't have a problem with jk rowling's comments because most mm -hmm. people feel um, the way that she does. Most people do. Okay. Um, so, and it's all, it's like, you know, when you look at the real world, nobody cares. But if you look on Twitter, mm -hmm. you see a lot of angry children. I mean, children in adult sized bodies. Well, and the sad thing is everyone listens to Twitter. Unfortunately. Yeah. I think it's stupid that they do, but they do listen to Twitter. All right. Well, that's our, our little look ahead at what Alan and I are excited about. But let's talk about this. Alan, are you ready? Oh, wait, before we do that, let's go to comments. Okay, yeah. I forgot. Let's go there. David Glenn, wanting and getting a good Fantastic Four movie is like being a Vikings football fan, hoping they win the Super Bowl. <laughs> I am yeah. I'm least hopeful that Fantastic Four will be good. Didn't the Lions just totally trounce the Vikings just... It was great. Yeah. I saw the score and I just laughed because the lions, the lions have a, have a saying it's not over till we lose. <laughs> that is the Detroit lions motto. Toxic waltz. And eight, we're all going to be racist if we don't see slash like the new captain America. Well, we'll see who is directing the new planet of the apes. Asks Patrick Lemire. I don't know. Alan, can you look for that? Yes. I will look that up. Okay. Look it up. Alan. 
Who is directing? Wait, wait, who is directing the new Planet of the Apes now? Look for it, Alan. Alan? Is there a name to it? That, oh, here we go. What's the new Planet of the Apes movie even called? It's called uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Who is directing it, it Alan? Who is, who is directing, directing it? Here we go. It is Wes Ball. Wait, what? Wes Ball, who did the wonderful Maze Runner series. Okay, so the guy who did the Maze Runner series. All right, well, there we go. Um, Anana Mouse says, Karate Kid, you got to be effing kidding me. They've tried to reboot that. They've times. already gender swapped him, and gender race swapped, swapped him. and it's just they like, have race swapped it already as well. You, you know what I like, Cobra Kai. I think that's a great take on how you continue that franchise. Mm -hmm. You got to tell a new story. You have to tell new stories. You cannot gender and race swap. Nobody cares. Why? Because the original exists and the original will always be better. It's the way it is. Tell a new story or introduce a new character. Creed is a good example of that, right? They didn't remake Rocky with a different actor playing Rocky. They continued the story. The son of Apollo Creed. It's a great story. Mm -hmm. um, and the third one looks really good. Just a yeah. good, solid trailer. Uh, where, where it just sets up a great conflict. That one is... Yeah, but but like the gender and race swap, it's uh, it's just it's yeah. Well, I'm just saying they've already done it before. The nerd far away says, "Here's an idea: stop redoing everything." God, like, yeah. yeah. And the sad thing is, you can't cast the Karate Kid as Asian. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> you. Oh my God, you're right. I didn't even think about that. I yeah, know it's bizarre. Well, I mean, at least Mr. Miyagi would get to be Asian. Well, a man in a wiki asks, "Is Willy Wonka going to be trans or gay in Wonka?" He'll, um, he will be Tim Timothy Chalamet. It'll be well. Then it'll be a twink. <laughs> a, a, Wonka tw a Wonka twink or a twinka? I don't know. Patrick Lemire says, Are, "At least we dodged the Amy Schumer Barbie bullet." Wow. Oh, that would have been awful. Uh, Ezra Miller should be in jail, not movies. At this stage, uh, Flaccid Phoenix has a couple comments here. I am only watching Aquaman two if Amber Turd is in it. And goes on to say, will Mission Impossible be the biggest hit of the year, like how Top Gun was? I believe it'll be one of the biggest movies of next year. I think that's pretty... Absolutely. That's a that's a safe bet. It's a surefire hit. I mean... Did I, you I see that trailer? Screw that up. That trailer is insane. Yeah. For the new and Mission it, Impossible. It, yeah, and because, because Tom and Christopher McQuarrie understand the franchise and understand why people like that franchise and we'll repeat that friend we'll repeat everything in it that we like uh a man on a wiki says i thought paw patrol was canceled because the main character was a cop <laughs> i think that lasted like a couple weeks and uh yeah i heard they defunded paw patrol thoughts on fitness with nigel nige set for buck 79 uh pounds thank you for that best youtubers of 2022 Alan Ng and Nina Infinity. Yeah. Which gets to our announcement. Uh <laughs> <laughs> what? What am I? Uh what no, that's great. I'm glad I'm missing glad. the sex appeal that we both bring to. I <laughs> think that Alan and I are very different, and that is a good thing. We're not very different, but we're different when it comes to tastes on things yeah. and you like things more than I do, but let's, uh, let's I think we approach films differently too. True. Yeah. True. Uh, but let's see, uh, Alan, would you like to present? I actually have mine in a Google doc. I'll reveal yeah. the whole doc, uh, in a minute, but Alan, why don't you present your movie, your best of 2022. And I'm going to try to fix my lighting while you do that. Hold on. Uh, best in the, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just no, making your a list. You, you I know I'm, 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 I'm to make the list. Posting the list. I'm posting the list. Share it. Share it. That's what. Yeah, well, why, that's why, what don't you, why don't you talk about it before you share it? Okay. No, I'll I'll do. So this is a mix of. Uh, why is this not growing? <laughs> Sorry, I'll, it's not working. All right, I'll. Okay, I'll just go over it. Um, so I'm gonna mix indie films. I'm gonna mix. Uh, um, I'm gonna mix some of the higher priced indies with some of the lower budget ones. Um, the two uh, big ones that have names in it and everything. Uh, the first one's Emily the Criminal, starring uh, our, our 
Aubrey Plaza. Um, a nice thriller. Uh, this one uh, came out of Sundance last year, actually. Um, you know, I, I think for that one, it just shows her her ability to to play dramatic, and not always be uh, be Aubrey Plaza. Uh, the other is Vengeance with um, B J Novak. Uh, another great one in terms of uh, it, it's one of those movies that you think is going to go woke, but doesn't go woke. And uh, you know, it's about a New York a New Yorker who uh, has to go into Texas to 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 uh, to, prom- to report on a story and. Uh, and he gets very affected by, by Texas itself. Um, the three indie, the low budget indies. Uh, one I'll bring up is Ninja Badass. I, I wish I had had these uh, had images for you here, but it's a very low budget uh, ninja comedy starring white people. Uh, very funny, very crazy. Um, the other one is uh, Corsicana, um, and uh, I do need to bring this one up. Let me pull it up here. Uh, or can't spell it right. Yeah, the other is Corsicana. It's uh, some people have talked about it this year, but we, when we talk about um, black heroes of of the old, uh, Corsicana is one. Uh, it's the story of Bass Reeves, uh, who was a basically he was a former slave, but he was a, a bounty hunter. And I'll uh, I'll pull. I'll pull the review up here. Whoops. Uh, there you go. So yeah, of course, kind of here. Uh, story of Bass Reeves, who uh, is kind of on his final mission to to take down uh, a bounty uh, as a bounty hunter. And uh, again, black story here. And then the the last one, which I will bring up, is called. Uh, eh. <laughs> Uh, the other one is called Hinterland. I've talked about this several times, um, but it's a uh, it's kind of a murder procedural that takes place right after uh, World War One. And um, what I like about this one is it's a tale that takes place after World War One, but it's also very stylistically, visually stylistic. Uh, you can kind of see uh, it's very Tim Burton esque. Uses a lot of green screen, um, and the stories are are very. I would liken it to Tim Burton as well, but you can kind of see the lines here on just how off, off putting they can be and how great that is. Um, but this is uh, a murder procedural starring a guy who uh, starring the, the main character is the former police detective of this town. He goes off to world war one, gets messed up and comes back and has to resume his duty, so to speak. And uh, it's just visually stunning. I really like this one. All right, those, those are my five. Uh, uh, that's interesting. Can you throw up your list again? Yeah. I was adjusting my lighting and made virtually no improvement whatsoever <laughs> in my lighting. Yeah, I'm trying to make this. I can make this bigger. Wow, this is. these are your top. Oh, these are best indie films. What are your top yes. film films? No, you said, look look at our header there. Top indies. Oh, top of- indies. Okay. Well, that's a. Di- I didn't put that header up. Did I put that up? Yeah, you did. That's why I thought we were talking about top indies. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, I mean, what we, okay. I mean, I could do my top. <laughs> I've gone through all of that. I, well, I do I, have a top. All right, well, I'll I'll just do my list here. Uh, okay. The top. Those are good. Those are good. Those are solid indie choices. Yes. I'm gonna do my top films. Of okay, the- and then I'll do mine after that. Okay. Good. Good. Top films, because here's the problem is the, the top indies, then we're kind of getting into award this territory. Yeah. So, but let's just do, let's just, because, and and the bottom is going to be very easy because <laughs> it could be like almost uh, most of the movies. So my top, uh, not going to surprise you, at, at uh, number five, Avatar, The Way of Water. I was surprised how much I enjoyed the movie. I was also... Um, surprised that it was a film that leaned into very universal themes and story um, storytelling, which I thought was great. Um, excuse me. So, uh, yeah, Avatar Way of Water, number five on a list of five. Uh, number four, Babylon. Um, and I might actually switch that with uh, number three, Tar. Uh, at number two, Top Gun Maverick. Number one, go ahead, 
You can guess it. That's right. RRR, number one on that list. So there you go. Um, okay. Very excited. I can show, let me share a screen here so, because I have a whole bunch on my um, honorable mentions. So let me get to that. Uh, let me zoom in. Oh, I don't think I have to. I'll zoom in a little bit here, uh, since I since I know how to do it now. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, the honorable mentions on the honorable mentions, which might be in a top ten, right? I've got the Northman, Marcel the Shell with shoes on, everything everywhere all at once, Elvis, Barbarian, the Black Phone, and the Batman. The Batman being probably the best superhero movie. But if I were going to do a top 10, it would be some combination of all of these movies. But um, I, I really just only felt comfortable doing like a top five. So there you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, do you Alan, me, do you want me to do my top five? Now? Let's do yours. Let's oh, okay. Do yeah. So uh, I'll start with five. And and again, I have honorable mentions that could have easily been swapped out with... Uh, with those, but uh, I had to pick one. So my number five is the menu. Uh, just a surprising, surprisingly well thought out, clever story. Uh, and it's about food too. And I love food. Uh, number four is RRR for obvious oh, wow. reasons. Yeah. Number three is Tar. Um, I just, Tar is probably the more, most Oscar worthy of the, of the, of my list. Uh, or you would consider that I just found it fascinating that I I was fully engaged in a movie that was mostly talking, um, and we're talking about music for crying out loud, and and music that I don't know anything about. I, I know nothing of Mahler, but now I feel like I do know a lot about Mahler. Uh, number two is Top Gun Maverick, uh, and uh, and my number one, which is not on your list at all, is Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's on my honorable mentions. Yes, but it's that is my top, top movie. Five. That is my top movie of the year. That is the one I will be voting for at the uh, at the Critics' Choice Awards. Um, yeah, th this movie came out early, uh, out of South by Southwest, um, and you know I still think about it. My daughter and I still think about it. We still talk about the movie, uh, and we've seen it many times. Um, and just on the honorable mention, th any of these could have replaced the menu easily. Um, Glass Onion probably didn't go up there because I didn't want to take the heat. Um, the other one was weird, the Al Yankovic story, and uh, and Black Phone. Black Phone uh, is the only film on the list that I've seen more than more than twice. Well, those are really good honorable mentions. I mean, yeah, weird. I I really loved it. I thought it was I thought it was super fun. Mm -hmm. So that's a good that's a good list, Alan. It's hard to. I mean, look. Obviously, we have very different tastes, mm -hmm. but it's I I like your list. Let's go yeah. to the comments here. We have some super chats, Thomas. Pain for 20. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Love the show. Please consider inviting on Dr. Robert M. Price and or Dr. Chris Ferguson. Price is a scholar of the Bible and myth and Ferg is a psych d, &D nerd. Both fight against wokeness and love comics and movies. Good suggestions. Are you familiar with uh, the doctors? I am not. I wonder if I know Dr. Price at all. Look up. And then Thomas Paine goes on to say with another $2 super chat, Jihad, Jihad Rehab was attacked by the woke mob. Seen it? No, I, I tend to really not know what's going on with woke mob nonsense because I just kind of ignore it. I kind of ignore it. So there you go. Um, but thank you, Thomas, for your uh, very generous super chats there. Uh <laughs> David Glenn says, Glenuccio should clip Alan saying, why is it not growing? <laughs> and Flaccid Phoenix has been a member for five months and says, when are we going to start a GoFundMe for Alan to <laughs> repaint his room? Oh. Alan, you got to repaint. We I really know. both need, we both need help. It's going to be our... like, a, it's going to take like two weeks to do it. I did something really stupid the other day as I, um, I was looking at uh comments a lot of comments people are saying people are saying you guys need better microphones you guys need better cameras you guys need a real set 
okay. <laughs> All right, we're working on it. You know, it's we've only really been doing this like a year. Has it been a year? It's about a year. Amanda to Wiki, I don't know if it is the same camera, but for my Razer webcam, you can adjust the brightness of your lighting by turning the wheel on the camera, if that makes any sense. First of all, thank you for that. I'm using an app called Webcam Settings that actually does allow me to change settings on the camera. Is there a wheel? Uh, there's no wheel, but there's wheel like, this, I can adjust the brightness. Wait, how's this? How's How's this brightness? Is that good? How do I look? You look white. I mean, all right. Well, that's so. There you go. Um, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I literally just, I was like, oh, I've got that new camera. I should hook it up. There you go. Uh, Andrew Simmons says, RRR, my shock face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just a normal face. Yeah. And we're going to see it one more time this weekend. So, Alan Horkin, weird was great. But I'm still not sure it would appeal to people not already fans of Weird Al. Who who's not a fan of Weird Al? Well, I mean, he does have kind of decades worth of fans. Yeah, you know, like literally going back to the '80s. Uh, so you know, I mean, I was right there when he first uh, made the scene listening to Doctor Demento. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, well, Greasy Guido says Gore turned his brightness level all the way up to the Ryan Cannell setting. <laughs> uh, the Nerd Far Away says, for what it's worth, I like Chris and Alan the way they are. They're real. Yeah, we're not like super polished. Like, um, we're not super polished when it comes to, you know, our set, our like, just nothing. Um but let's get into it. Um, you know, we're we're kind of ahead of the game here. Normally, we're like um, not quite up to it. But let's get. We're gonna do this. This is a. Uh, I'm gonna. This is gonna be a Megan review. We may. We're gonna do another. Oh, we're not gonna do our bottom five. Oh, our bottom five. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. About that. Let's do a reset here. Bottom films of 2022. I have. I've got three. Alan, what are I've yours? Got five. I've got five. Oh, you um, do? Yeah, and, and I will say that these movies are not, you know, indie films. These are stuff the studios put out. So I'll qualify worse films that way. But uh, I'll start. Number five is Armageddon Time. Um, you know, I was okay with it when I first saw it. And then as I kept thinking about it, it just got more pretentious and pretentious as it as I kept thinking about it. Oh. Um, but it's it's basically a movie about white guilt about a white man's guilt about the racism he's he's had in his life and and you know listening to Anne Hathaway talk about her craft um it just really it just really soured me on this movie so it's a very pretentious movie and, and you'll see it when you if if you ever decide to watch it right uh, number four is the Sun uh, and I feel bad about this one because it, it talks about suicide and uh, and mental health um, but the 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 script the story is just so basic and uh this is the guy who did the father which i really liked uh mm -hmm. florian zeller i believe and it starts hugh jackman um and uh it's so predictable everything about this movie uh this is a classic movie where the audience will be an hour ahead of the movie and mm -hmm. you're just waiting for for the moments to happen and then there's the ending which highly predictable and when you when it happens and you see the scene where it happens, you're thinking in your mind, okay, just waiting for it, waiting for it. And it just goes on and on until it finally happens. And you're like, thank God this movie's over. Um, so the sun. Uh, number three, Chris, you'll like this one, but it's Babylon. Uh, what? My number, my number three bottom film is Babylon. Uh, save for three really good scenes. The movie is just three hours too long. And it's it's a chore to get through is absolute chore to get through and and as much as i like movies I, this did not spur my love of movie making whatsoever um so i'm with eric weber on this one um number two is strange world uh oh I, wow I, yeah and and that's a disney movie so you got paid a lot oh hey well wait to see number one 
but Strange World, this is a classic example of putting agenda before story. Right. Um, uh, you know, I'm 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 a, I'm not against diversity. Uh, I'm not against LGBT stories, but again, the story has to come first. Right. And, and if the goal of your movie is to be diverse and to and to uh, you know diverse in color, in race, in sexual orientation, that's fine. But you still got to have a good story. And 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 the thing about Strange World, the the the, the thing that got me in this movie is midway through. They're complaining about, um, you know, like the the elders are 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 saying every story has to have a villain, and the boy is saying uh, no villain, no no story needs a villain, and and so the basically the story is saying, hey, our strange world is so good it doesn't need a villain. When you realize it really needed a villain, and that uh, these guys don't know anything about storytelling at all. And then finally, the the worst movie of twenty twenty two is Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Um, Again, another misguided movie. Um, didn't help that Chadwick Boseman died. Didn't help that it was uh, done during the pandemic, and uh, it was just uh, it was just the biggest letdown of the year. You know, I was I was on board saying, you know, the the thing that this movie has going for it is Ryan Coogler, and and he couldn't pull it off, and they just went in all the wrong directions. And I think when they finally killed off Angela Bassett's character. Uh, the queen um that was that was to me uh realizing that this this franchise has no more legs to it whatsoever and, and as much as i like the tisha right uh, and shuri um she's not she's not the black panther so that's my top 5 he's a good side character mhm mm he's a good yeah. like supporting character let's say yeah, and I, I I feel bad for the series. I feel bad for the franchise. I feel bad for all the actors involved. Well, um, I, yeah. I think they, I made a terrible choice. They made a terrible choice by deciding not to recast Chadwick Boseman. They mm -hmm. made a terrible choice. Now, I think they could amend that choice with some multiverse stuff mm -hmm. and, and have a new actor come in as a Black Panther from another Earth that ends up on our universe so to speak but um yeah that was a huge miscalculation which is perfect to introduce my bottom list <laughs> okay which I, was, which I was amending as you were doing yours <laughs> I so see you had a I, few of mine did you add well, babylon to it no babylon's on one, one of my top did you see my list <laughs> yes i did all right well we'll get to your i just, I just like the fact that one of your films on the top is it's on my bottom all right, that's okay. That's it's I, love the I love the phrasing of this segment. It's fine. The bot. Okay, so the bottom of 2022. There's too many to add. I feel like 2022 was a terrible year for movies. Um, everything from like women talking to After Sun, which was highly overrated, to so many. Um, it's just, it's just, it's one of those things where when you're struggling to come up with a top ten list, or struggling when it comes to a top whatever god i'm really that's really bright isn't it when i switch to the it's just super bright i don't know i don't know how to fix yeah. that i mean you it's have really a shine on your face that's the only problem right now with your with your lighting really yeah is it a shine a well, there shine, you go yeah. um it can't, can't be helped uh so but look there was just like there was so much that was awful but i had to include i included some series okay so we're gonna start with uh at number seven, it's a. The thing is, it's, there's just too many to put on the list. It would be a list of I put all other movies because there's just so many bad. <laughs> this year was especially bad. This year was a weak year for film. Absolutely, it was. It was a weak year for film. Uh, number seven, um, which was your number one, Wakanda Forever, is my number seven. I think choosing not to cast um, uh, Chadwick Boseman was a huge mistake. They should have. Continued that character. Excuse me. Um, number six, Pinocchio. It's the Robert Zemeckis Pinocchio okay. <laughs> with Tom Hanks. It was terrible. It came to streaming only. It was an embarrassment. Uh, Disney, a lot of Disney on here. Uh, Strange World. It was just it was just a bad story that, uh, like I say, looked like it was written by a teacher that would be featured on libs of TikTok. So I was not a big fan of Strange World. Um, I think a lot of, you know, what they were, the message, so to speak, 
is was so forced, you know, you're not leading the audience along. It just um, uh, really just terrible. And it tanked at the box office. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is on my list. Oh, you're putting TV in there too? I just threw TV in because I want, yeah, I threw TV okay. in. Because there's just too many movies to put on this list. And I wanted to make sure to acknowledge it's the bottom of 2022. Okay. I just did movies. Okay. You just did movies. All right. Well, I'm sure you're not going to disagree with me on many of these. Yeah. Um, but Strange World, Kenobi at number four. Number three is She Hulk. I feel like um, that movie, just as it went on, it kind of started out like, oh, there's something interesting. A flawed female character. Where do we see flawed female characters? She's kind of an asshole and a bitch and that's good you know it's good it's characters can start one way and have a lesson and learn something and i like flawed characters are interesting and it went off the rails by the time it got to episode four and just was just insulting by the end uh number two rings of power just never took flight i think it was boring um you know like i think part of what it needed to do is bring in people who are not fans of Tolkien or Lord of the Rings and Rings of Power just ended up being a snore fest. And number one, the number one movie on my bottom of 2022 list is bros. <laughs> it's bros. Billy Eichner, who I actually like in small doses when he would do his Billy on the street. He's also been in shows like, for example, um, uh, Parks and Rec. I, thought he was a real likable actor um and he just could not sustain being the lead of a film and the fact that the marketing immediately pivoted to well the audience is homophobic i think that's wrong i think that's a completely wrong way to promote a film um and and of course you never see them using that strategy for a movie that's successful right it's only movies that people people don't like or it doesn't perform well at the box office but this is my bot the thing is is there's just too many other movies to put on this list yeah. it would literally be a list of 25 things so it's hard to come up with a top 10 list yet easy to come up with like we could do bottom tv we could do bottom like uh you know streaming bottom like you know bottom at the box office but there are movies that i would put on this list something like uh she said which is, a, a, by all accounts, a good movie, but tone deaf. Hollywood is tone deaf because they have not... You don't atone by making a film, okay? You don't atone by making a film. There are women... Especially when you were involved in what happened in that film. There are women with Oscars on the shelves that were involved with Harvey Weinstein who are very quiet now. Yeah, didn't Meryl Streep call him God at one point? And... There are there are women and there are people who have Oscars on their shelves that made deals in a quid pro quo situation that have Oscars that are very quiet now. And uh, make of that what you will. Let's go to your comments here on this. Uh, let's see. A man in a wiki says bros would be happy to know it was the bottom. <laughs> uh there you go david glenn the white screen is still looking at james gunn that white screen huh uh bros gotta go says joshua page andrew word no everything ever all at once ha had great structure it understands structure and subtext something even northman wasn't very good at patrick lemire says she was flawed but the writers thought those flaws were great attributes I thought it was going to be like some, because when you look at all the female characters that have been introduced mm -hmm. post um, end game, they've all been the bestest ever. And it, I think flawed people are interesting. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of indie movies have flawed people. Well, that's what makes characters relatable that they're not perfect. Uh, exactly. They're not, they're not Captain Marvel, you know, that they have flaws and that they, they have to overcome those flaws in order to get the war. But but going back to your comment about um, you know a television series improving over time, this is a television series that that got worse over time. Yes, uh, and and that there was zero feedback that they got to say, hey, no, you're on the right, wrong course. Make these changes, and you might actually have a good series on your hand. 
Seca says sea of garbage and Chris for five. If you thought Hollywood woke activism is bad now, wait until the Supreme court strikes down affirmative action in colleges in 2023. Well, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. Well, you mean when they let Asians go to college again? Yeah. When they actually go by the scores and merit. Yeah. Which I think is what uh, they that maybe my daughter won't have to work harder than the white people in order to go to college. Right. Yeah. Okay. Pilgrim media. Good to see you. Pilgrim media, sir. <laughs> I saw you on the nooner for two happy new year's guys. Pilgrim. Thank you for that. And Pilgrim. I assume, did you send me a self-addressed stamped envelope yet? Make sure you do that. We had a conversation a couple of weeks ago. Patrick Lemire says it was a shit heavy year. Oh, you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so there you go. Um, 69 ing says deconstructing Karen best horror movie. Oh my gosh. You, everyone needs to see this movie. If not just for the lesson, critical race theory, but, yeah. but, but it, it is a horror movie. What these white women have to go through. Oh my God. Heinlein says it's going to take six months for Disney to recover from what <laughs> Alan just said. Alan mouse house, mic drop. <laughs> It's great. It, it's sad that since the pandemic, uh, I haven't been to Disney, but I will probably be going to Universal first. Uh, we're going together to go to the uh, Super Mario thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I want to do that. Okay. Uh, the Alex Zorba says glass onion should be flushed down a toilet. I tried to watch it again. I was like, it's okay. Not as good as the first one. Uh, I tried to watch it again with my girlfriend because she wants mm -hmm. to watch all the Oscar movies. She hated it. She and did. She was like, why are we still watching this? This is terrible. These characters are so annoying. And I turned it off. I was like, let's just not watch it. We'll watch something else. Then we watched After Sun, which was... <laughs> and then it was... Yeah, uh, got, yeah. Yeah. And then you just erase the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bass Player 2011 if I says the Harry Potter cast, excluding Felton, are a bunch of ungrateful little shits. None of them would have a career if it wasn't for Rowling. I would agree. Well, see, I, I would, Rowling. along with Felton, I would include any actors over the age of 40. Yeah. yeah. Who was Felton again? Yeah. Felton was... Uh, he was... Um, oh, Malfoy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Alex Misty for two says, other than being too long, I really liked Babylon. Ah, ha, ha! There, there you go. Yeah. So, um, and let's see. Uh, Tyler Wolf for two says Kate Hudson makes Patrick Starr look like Einstein, and it hurts because it's true. Says it's not the movies, it's the people. Hollywood went woke, that's who they are. They cannot make better movies than what they are making because, as people, they're failures. I would just say that a certain type of attitude certain type of person is, is hired in Hollywood and you would have to do an Elon Musk Twitter style purge in order to start from scratch or start a separate production company or indie film company. Um, and, and you'd have to do it that way. But yeah, uh, you really got to like do a major purge of talent and bring in maybe some seasoned veterans. Yeah. Some seasoned veterans. I and mean, this is weird to ask, but what, what is Jeremy Renner's politics? I'm going to guess, because he doesn't talk politics, that he's very based. I, yeah. I'm not saying he's Republican. I'm saying that most people who don't talk about politics, a lot of people and people I have met are either fairly politically middle of the road. You know, their their politics is, yeah. is you know, middle of the yeah. road politics or they're Republican, but old school Republican, not far right by any means, mm -hmm. just conservative, but don't necessarily, just because you may be conservative doesn't mean you're also voting Republican either. Right. It's not as if I, I really despise both political parties. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. But right I, now I, I do. <laughs> yeah. I I've always been kind of middle of the road, but lean left. Um, but lately I, I, my whole thing was in the nineties. It was like, I just vote for the party that is the least crazy. In the 90s, I thought the party that was crazy uh, was the right with all the censorship of music and labels and protesting gay funerals and crazy nonsense. Yeah. But guess, uh, guess who's involved in censorship now? Exactly. Now it's switched. Now you have the left 
has become authoritarian and it's uh, horrific to see in real time. But I, but to bring up Jeremy Renner, I think because we don't know a lot, you know, he doesn't talk about this stuff is why I think people, I think why the world is rooting for him to, to, to make a miraculous recovery. Maybe. Hey, you know what? We're going to have to get to that Megan review on Friday. So we will do Megan. We're going to do Gore versus Weber round two. You if think you I'm sure, yeah. That's going to be the graphic. Yeah. It's going to be on one side, like, like a title fight. It's going to be Eric Weber and then me. And, and, and it'll be Gore versus Gore V Weber. And, yeah, I want to see you guys talk about After Sun because I think it'll get personal. And I and I want to see that live on stream. Good. Well, you're you're gonna be oh, can you wear like a referee t-shirt? <laughs> oh like, order one off Amazon. Order a referee uh t-shirt off of Amazon. Uh, and if I was like performing if I was performing this weekend, I could grab a ref shirt, but I can't. You have one at your work? Uh yeah, at the theater. Just buy one on Amazon. Yeah, okay. Alan, I'll pay you back. <laughs> okay. Wear it. It'll be okay. funny. And then get, do you have a whistle? I'll have to get one too. <laughs> Just go on Amazon, get a whistle and a referee t-shirt. And then Weber and I on Friday, mm -hmm. it's going down. We'll talk about Megan at the beginning of the show. And then, and then um, Eric will come on around 11. So about mm -hmm. an hour into the show. And then, and then we're just going to go for it. And then <laughs> Alan will have to like for a minute, go and change into the ref outfit. Yeah. And we'll kind of set it up. You know, have to put you guys in your corners. And <laughs> well, I want to see you actually genuinely ref it. Because if it gets too heated, which yeah. could happen. Yeah. Well, if you guys talk about after sun, I think I think that's going to be very spicy. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's go to our final comments here as we wrap up the show. Chris says the content is what matter. Don't care about camera, Mike. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for saying that. But I do care about improving what we do. Um, you know, I did get a better microphone. I don't know that I'm even using it correctly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I might even just do a stream, maybe just for members only. I just do a stream where I'll do, I'll answer questions, but I'll actually be live, like redoing my space. Just do it live. Cause why not? Then I can get feedback from people live. Would you like that? People in the chat, just type Y if you would like me to literally do a live stream where I answer your questions and live, you know, I will make changes to my space. I'll move stuff around. I'll bring in certain <laughs> collectibles, take certain out. Maybe I go, I just, I'll change it. An interior design stream. And Solomon Thornton says, Eric Weber versus Gore is what the world is waiting for. All right. John Orchard for five says, I like Anthony Hopkins statement. I'm an actor. I don't have an opinion. Joshua Page, why? We'll see. Are we getting a lot of people yeah. in the in in the comments? Are they yeah. just is Check it why? Oh, I'm seeing a lot of whys. All right, yeah, we'll do we'll do that, but we'll do it on an off day. We'll do it on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll announce it in the next month. I'll do it because I really do want to get my space um, fixed up here. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right, uh, Al, we just got a few more comments to go through, and we'll wrap it up there. Uh, but yeah, just want to, I want to remind people I do get worked up. I'm very passionate about things, but I'm, uh, I don't know. In spite of us getting like worked up, Alan and I are a team no matter what. So, so there you go. Just the other one. Remind people. Remind people of that. Like, no matter what happens, Alan and I stick together. But yeah, productions generally don't have. You get to that point, you're going to need an HR. Uh, that's just my personal, and you're going to have to have some, you know, you just have some version of an HR department. So, uh, HR departments. So, Do you just feel that, by the way? What's that? Uh, earthquake. Oh, cool. <laughs> There was an earthquake that day. <laughs> there was. There was. Yeah, we, we haven't we haven't been really playing our videos, and I think you know we've got over six hundred people watching live. Um, Patrick Lemire points out six hundred. It's actually yeah six twenty nine in the chat. Only three hundred and one likes. Smash it. Also, but if we get to sixty five thousand subscribers, uh, it's the Avatar Four DX challenge. 
You just want to see Avatar again. I don't. I actually don't want to do this. You should take video of. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I just want to get us to sixty-five thousand. You gotta get take video of yourself doing it. I then. will. I will. But, oh, okay. I'll take so, video. I'll order you... a large drink, and I will. I will. Uh, the challenge has also been to not go to the bathroom at any time during the movie. You gotta just just shoot some pictures and video. I want to see it. Yeah. The other thing is, don't forget to order. You gotta order a whistle and a ref okay. shirt in your size. All right, just go on Amazon, send me the total, and I'll I'll okay. I'll, I'll reimburse you, Alan, because we can use it for something else. It'll be fun to have. I don't know that I can get it by, because it's got to be overnighted. You got Prime, right? Prime is overnight. Yeah, but yeah, but if uh, I don't know that I can get it by tomorrow, that's the thing. You uh, just go for it. Okay. Come on, everybody wants it. I'll go for it. Everybody, I know exactly where to, I know everybody where to, wants to see Alan in a ref outfit with a whistle. No, what they what they want to see is you and Weber uh, get personal, and and, uh, yeah. and and one of you cries. I want to see one of you cry at the greasy. End. Wait, greasy Guido says for five fifty five. Is that eighty style PSA video you made about subtitles posted anywhere? It is on the channel. I can show it to you right now. Shakti says, "Do it, Alan." <laughs> And and English Batcher says, if you're going to be a ref, don't forget those 80s short shorts. Oh, my God. Alan in 80s <laughs> short shorts. Yeah, guess what? In the 80s, I had 80s short shorts. Yeah, just, um, no, someone says, get one. Uh, Spidey Sensei 72 says, get one from a disgruntled Foot Locker employee, Alan. Alan in referee short shorts. Oh, my God. that Dude, that would be great. Oh, man. That would be awesome. All right, final comments here. And thank you, Greasy Guido. For that, um, I'm gonna show uh Artful Dodger 2022 was the best year ever. It brought us freaking IKEA chair. Well, there, there you go. Let's see if I can find that video, that 80s style. Do we still have it on our channel? It might be on the uh the other brand. Is it the other branding? If it, if it is, it's it'll be there. Let's see. I see right, uh, I'll, I'll look for it. See foreign, no, yeah, no. Oh, foreign films, right? Or is it some no, oh, no, you're talking about the subtitles. No, subtitles. Yeah, oh, that's the foreign I, I, film. Right? I found it. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna watch this and then we'll wrap it up from there. Just uh, it's a one minute. It's one minute video. This was requested, so let's watch for it. So cool up here in the balcony. Totally. Hey, what's this about this movie being in another language? Yeah, you have to read what they're saying. Sounds pretty weird. I'm gonna go get some popcorn. Huh? Excuse me, sorry. You are precious. Subtitles. They're not just un-American, they kill. That's right, they kill. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Alan, I want to say thank you to everybody watching us. Uh, God, we had 600 plus people watching. Our audience continues to grow. Uh, we really appreciate you. We will see you on Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We'll be talking about Megan. Uh, Megan, we've got a couple other movies to review. Alan's going to be talking about that Otto movie with Tom Man Hanks. Man Called Otto. Man Called Otto with Tom Hanks. We'll be talking about that. And Eric Weber will be here to battle me over our movie disagreements. We're going to do it. We're going to do it live. Alan, what do you have to say? Let's get out of here. Take care, everyone.